Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at this knife. This is the Neckmuck. Oops, put that over my mic. <laughs> this is the Neckmuck by QSP Knives, the uh, QS125 uh, designer, Arthur Brem, uh, a guy who I've come to know and uh, since starting YouTube. He's a YouTuber in Germany who's a maybe the biggest knife nut in Germany. Uh, he's got a channel where he does a lot of things in German, but he's also got an English YouTube channel where he talks about knives. And uh, he's got a lot of knives. He's got, uh, he doesn't sell any knives. He's one of those guys. Ever since he was a young boy, he was collecting knives. And uh, so he's got hundreds and hundreds. Um, I don't know if it's into the thousand already knives that he has. Uh, and uh, he works a little bit with a knife company. He's primarily a trucker uh, by trade, but he designs knives. And I've already reviewed one of his designs that QSP made, the uh, Worker. And uh, that's a great uh, little knife, a classic knife in modern materials. And the Neckmuck is a different take on the, uh, the uh, Nesmuck style blade in a little carry that you can use on your neck. Now, you could easily uh, put on a different uh, system and have it uh, a waist carry, just add on a little like tech lock type system or what have you. But I like this little knife and contrary to other Canadian knife reviewers, Kevin Cleary, you know who you are. I like neck knives. I can see their point. I can understand their value and they make sense to me, and uh, I like them. So if you're interested in seeing a review on this, that's probably why you clicked on the link, right? So just before we get into it, if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. I've found out less than 20% of my viewers, the video views that I get are of subscribers. So a lot of people watch my videos, but they never subscribe. And so if you would consider subscribing, I would really appreciate it very much. Uh, it really would help out the channel an awful lot uh, in a number of ways. Uh, the primarily, primary one being I'll be able to have relationships with more knife vendors and more knife manufacturers who will be willing to work with me to uh, get knives to me to review. Uh, please click share and uh, Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever way you think of the video. So thanks for working with me. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this thing. What do we have? We've got D2 steel, which I've got no problem with. It's got a satin finish. It's got that sort of neckmuck style blade. Sort of like a little bit like a sheep's foot. I think it looks quite nice. QSP logo right there. We've got a very gradual plunge here, a small sharpness choil. And on this Ricasso, you got the QSP logo, some uh, pointed jimping. On this side here, we've got uh, Arthur's uh, designer logo, D2. And that's all the writing that's on this thing. Uh, it's got sort of that uh, duck kind of look. That's the eye. This is the bill. Yeah. <laughs> G10 uh, comes in three different colors. Um, black. Brown. And this OD green. Flat on the sides to help keep the price down because this is a budget knife. We've got three screws that hold it together. And uh, that's about it. Now, for the shape of this thing, we've got three individual finger choils, and then your pinky can go back here. Or you can do a reverse grip if you had to. Uh, I hope you would never need to have a reverse grip on a knife like this, uh, because you'd rather have something else if you needed to uh, you know, defend your life. But uh, hey, yeah, it is a solid grip that you can have on this thing, a very secure grip so that uh, the knife is not gonna come loose on you uh, when you're using it. 
we've got steel that's a little bit over an eighth of an inch thick and it stays uh, full thickness only up to here and then you start a taper coming down it's still fairly thick behind the grind at the tip but not terribly it comes down nice and thin behind the grind here and you know it's a decent blade it's all belly now some people might be wondering why would you want a neck knife? What are you, what are you going to do with a neck knife? What are you going to carry it for and things like that? Before I get into that, I'm going to try to fix the lighting because the lighting just seems off. There, I think that looks a little bit better. I have to adjust the exposure settings. Uh, why would somebody want a neck knife? Well, I like a neck knife because it keeps the knife convenient at the front. This is not an EDC choice, not even a uh, rural EDC choice. I like carrying a neck knife when I go camping. Um, you know, with my bad legs, I don't do hiking an awful lot, but I used to be able to do some hiking. And I like having a neck knife because, you know, especially if you're going through dense woods, and I like to go exploring off trail, um, you can have a neck knife and you tuck it into your front upper pocket on a shirt or if you've got a backpack you can create something to, to put it keep it in the front and um, having the chain with it around your neck well I don't really prefer the chain but I do like a neck knife around the neck it keeps it convenient where you know so that you have it right where you need it when you want it to and it's not going to get caught on stuff on the sides and I even like this kind of knife at a campsite it's a you know, a minor food prep kind of knife. You can hold it uh, something like this and do food prep, a little bit of chopping, cutting, you know. This is also a good knife, uh, like if you're harvesting your own mushrooms, if you've got knowledge on mushrooms. <laughs> Some mushrooms are kind of scary, but, um, you know, this isn't a, a mushroom knife, but it certainly works for that kind of task. There's a lot of little jobs around a campsite or when you're out hiking that a little knife can be very handy. And I wouldn't want to carry too big of a neck knife, but I've carried big neck knives as well. Four and a half, five inch blades around my neck. No problem at all. I don't mind. It doesn't, it's not uncomfortable around the neck um, and it's convenient. Some people just can't stand having stuff around their neck. Like my wife, um, even a light necklace can sometimes bother her around her neck. She just doesn't like having anything that way. So I understand how some people might not like having something around their neck. Now, this comes with a chain. Yeah, it's the same kind of chain as um, you know, in your bathroom sink. You've got some chain. See, it comes apart with those buttons and things. I don't like this. Take that away and use paracord. Focus. I like to use paracord. Here I've got, um, whoops, got it tangled around there. Here I've got my uh, Molnir by uh, Ostap Hell. It's starting to get a lot of patina on it. But I just have a piece of paracord tied off and I wear it around my neck. And at the other end, I've got this. These are just little snaps. Uh, you put them on, you tie off your paracord. And there you go. And now you've got something comfortable on your neck. Nice paracord, nice feel. Yet it's safe enough that if you did accidentally get hung up on a branch or something, it's going to snap loose and you're not going to choke yourself to death. Whereas if you just had paracord tied off, this is 550 paracord. This could hold my weight, no problem, and choke me to death. So I have a little security system. And then I've got something that'll hold and stay on when I want it to. And it doesn't get in the way. And it's convenient and it's nice. The rest of this sheath uh, with these holes in here, like I said, you can put on a kite. Uh, I'll go get one and show you what I mean. I keep forgetting the word. If you like the knife and the idea of it, but you don't like it as a neck knife, you can add one of these to it. Uh, you know, and put it on your belt, you know, the holes match up. So you see those two holes, they match up with the those two holes there. 
You don't have to use something heavy like that. You can use an Alti clip, which is a really good system. And, you know, screw it on uh, wherever it seems to fit for you. You'll find holes, you'll find ways to match up because they've got a variety of holes. So use something light like this. You can even find little clips like this and put it on, tighten it up, and uh, wear it scout style on your back. You can find all kinds of different ways to carry this on a belt or where have you. It doesn't really matter. This is a nice little sheath. Kydex, we've got a drain hole, well made, and the retention is really well done. It holds tight. Just a little bit of sound. Uh, and push off with your thumb to take it out. Good retention. Nice, thin, light kydex. So there's a, you don't have to use this as a neck knife. Let's talk a little bit about the handle. Flat G10. I would like this a little bit better if they would have rounded a little, a little bit more. But it's not bad, especially since this is a really budget knife. It's under 40 US dollars when you pay full price for it. And, uh, you know, if you buy this at White Mountain Knives, they're out of stock right now on all three of the colors. But uh, click on the Notify Me button and put in your email address. And with my 10% off coupon code CCE, this thing would equal $35.87 US. Not bad at all for D2 steel in, you know, a knife with a sheath. The sale, uh, I mean, the coupon price it's about 46 Canadian, about uh, 30 euros, about 27 British pounds. So not bad at all. And I'll put a link down below for uh, White Mountain Knives and any other places, well, some other places that I can find that there are links for that I'll add some links to make it easy for you to get some. We were talking about the handle. I sometimes switch around on topics, don't I? It's fairly comfortable. It would be better rounded, but it's okay. You've got a lanyard option. That's not bad. Uh, I would have liked, and um, what I would probably do, but I don't do it on reviews, I don't change things, file down or sand down the end here so that uh, the lanyard holes, the G10's gone here so that the paracord doesn't build bulk up around it so that it would be smaller. Because the end of the handle here, you don't really need everything there. Um, you're generally gonna carry it this way, and so that would take away the bulk right there or here on your pinky if you wanted to use paracord. Not that hard to get rid of that. It's just that there's glass fibers in here, so use breathing protection when you sand glass fibers because uh, just like fiberglass, that stuff can hurt your lungs and uh, lead to cancer. So you don't want to do that. Other than that, the handle's quite nice, so you can take this apart if you need to clean it or whatever. Um, that's about it for the handle. The blade here, uh, this jimping adds a nice grip. I like that quite a lot. Put your thumb in there. You can push down and cut hard if you need to. Uh, the blade shape, like I said, comes down thin, so the tip is strong. So, But you're not going to do prying and stuff with this anyways, so that's okay. Nice and thin behind the grind, like I mentioned. Well, this area here, the sharpener's trial is too small for that gradual rounded plunge. I wish they would have done a, a quicker plunge or a bigger sharpness trial, but I don't really want a bigger sharpness trial. I'd rather have you know this knife be like maybe half an inch longer. I'd like to have three inches of cutting edge. This is about two and a half. But as you can see, even on this side with the plunge, if I get closer to the camera, you can see how the sharpening, it gets wider this way this thin little line here. That's because it's going up the plunge and then it has to go wider. So the sharpness trail should have been a little bit bigger if they wanted to keep that really gradual plunge. Not a big deal, especially on a knife this price. So that's pretty much, you know, the knife. Let's go over all of the dimensions, uh, those kinds of details. The uh, sharpness from the factory, 190 bass, not terrible, could have been better, but not bad. The uh, weight of this knife is 81 grams, 2.85 ounces uh, with the sheath. 
it is and chain 105 grams, 3.75 ounces, so very light. The uh, length of the cutting edge is 6.56 centimeters, 2.583 inches. So, you know, a little over two and a half inches, not bad. The blade length, so the tip to the closest spot on the handle G10 here, 7.23 centimeters, 2.847 inches. So basically 2.85 inches, not bad. The uh, blade thickness, right up here, 3.39 millimeters. That's 0.1335 inches, so a little bit over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest point is right here, 2.51 centimeters, which is 0.988 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, about here in the middle, that's close to one inch. 0.39 millimeters, 15 and a half thousandths of an inch. So nice and thin, which is very good because every time you sharpen this, since it's a full flat grind, it's gonna get thicker and thicker behind the grind each time. So starting nice and thin is a really good thing. The grind angles. Now, whoever sharpened this thing at QSP didn't do a very good job. Uh, this side here, 16.6 degrees. This side, 25.4 degrees. And the, the angle is even greater at the tip and at the heel. Yeah, not, not, not that good. D2, I'd probably do this at about 17 and a half degrees per side, and uh, then it would perform even better. Uh, the handle length, so the length of the G10 here is 9.2 centimeters, 3.622 inches. The thickness is 1.02 centimeters, which is 0 0.402 inches. The handle depth, 3.22 centimeters, 1.268 inches. The uh, grip area, and where do you measure the grip area with this back here? Roughly about nine and a quarter inches, a little over, uh, actually roughly nine and a quarter centimeters, <laughs> a little over three and a half inches. And the total length of this knife is 16.49 centimeters. Oh, I forgot to put it in inches. What is that in inches? 16.49 is six and a half, just under six and a half inches. So yeah, it's small, it's light, it's convenient, it's all right. So if you're in the market for one of these, uh, you know, consider the Neckmuck. I think it's a nice knife for what you get makes a good gift and it makes a good little user uh, for around the camp. Certainly not a primary knife or anything like that, but sometimes you just want to grab, you know, do a little cut job, put it back and keep going. And I think this is a rather convenient and uh, well thought out. Arthur, I think you did a good job with this. So thank you for watching my video. If you've not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would appreciate it very much. Thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting, it makes a big difference. Remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.